Okay, in this video we are going to uh, solve this problem. So we're given the position function. Um, S of t is t cubed minus 4t squared plus 2t plus 1. And we want to find the displacement on the interval from 0 to 5. And also the distance traveled on the interval from 0 to 5. We're going to use a calculator all the way through. Um, so let's, uh, let's get started. So to make my life easier, I'm actually going to copy this so I can use it in the calculator page. So let's uh, I'm gonna insert doc four, and then I'm gonna insert a calculator page and define the function. So s parentheses t and then colon equals, so that's control and the template. And then I'm gonna paste, hopefully. Didn't work, all right, so t cubed minus four t squared plus two t plus one. I'm gonna press enter and it should say done. And it does. All right, so we were looking for displacement uh, from zero to five and also distance traveled. So distance traveled is a more complicated question. Displacement is just where you ended up minus where you started. So that's just going to be S of five. Let me get the cursor out of the way. So S of five. So when you're on the handheld, if you press the VAR key, you can get S of five. And it, I mean, it fills in the parentheses. S is not really hard to type, but minus S of zero. I'm gonna press enter. That's the displacement. So you're 35 uh, units to the right of where you started, I guess, um, or you could be 35 units above where you started. But the displacement is positive 35. All right, now we need to tackle distance traveled. So for distance traveled, we need to know the starting point and ending point, but also we need to know everywhere this thing turned around in the interval. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a look at a graph and just see uh, a graph of velocity, so I need to find velocity. So let's find the derivative. So template, uh, this right here is the derivative template. So the derivative with respect to t, so fill in t, s of t, I'm gonna press enter. Uh, so it's just power rule to get the derivative in this case, uh, but it'll work on any function, which is good. And then I need to uh, find where this equals zero. So one option I could solve, so menu three, Enter, uh, so I can either paste this down or I can paste this down. It doesn't make a difference which. I'm gonna paste this equals zero and I wanna solve that for t. Technically, I only really care between zero and five. I'm just gonna press enter and see what happens. Uh, okay, so I get these values. So let me control enter. Um, they're actually both on the interval from zero to five. Uh, so what I need to do now is kind of store these. So I'm going to, I don't really like messing around with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a graph page. So I'm basically gonna solve this again. I'm gonna add a graph page. And on the graph page, I'm going to graph the derivative. So derivative, except I need, because I'm graphing a function, the variable needs to be x. So I'm just gonna switch over to x. Um, it doesn't matter. You don't need to redefine the function. You just say now the variable is x. So the derivative of s of x with respect to x, graph that. I'm gonna also, so hit tab, add zero, and press enter. Okay, now I'm gonna do menu eight, one, three. If you have a CX2, it's actually menu eight, one, four, which is kind of annoying, um, but I'm not using a CX2 right now. So click and click, and then I'm gonna press escape to make this go away, and I'm gonna, Use a trackpad to get over this. I'm um, just uh, click. You can see here, if you click that, you can then drag. All right, so I have both of these. What I really wanna do is I wanna store these. So I'm starting at, uh, so I have zero is a starting point, five is an ending point, and then I need each of these. So what I'm gonna do is arrow over it and press control and then menu, and a contextual menu is gonna pop up. So I'm arrowed over just this, press this, and choose store. And I'm gonna store that as, uh, I don't know, A, I guess. And press enter. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. So trackpad over to this, control, and then menu. And store this as B. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna find the displacement from zero to A, take the absolute value, add to that the displacement from A to B the absolute value of that displacement, and then add to that the absolute value of the displacement from B to five. 
So that's my goal. So now I have these stored. I'm gonna go back here, which you can do by pressing control and then left or right. So here, okay, so I need absolute value. So, well, if you don't remember what they are, so here's A, here's B. You can see they're the same values. Uh, I think that's the easiest way to get them stored is actually from the graph page rather than the calculator page. Uh, you can do whatever you think is simplest. All right, let's find some displacement. So I need the absolute value template. So pick that and it's the first one. So I'm gonna say it's S of A minus S of zero. And then plus, so make sure you're outside of the absolute value. Do it again. S of B minus S of A. And then plus, we're gonna do it again. And it's S of five minus S of uh, B. Okay, so uh, we start at zero, we turn around the first time at A, so we found that displacement here and took its absolute value. Then we start at A and we go to B, we find that displacement and take its absolute value. Then we start at B and go to five, find that displacement and take its absolute value. So I'm gonna hit enter and I get 44.369 which to three decimals would be 44.370. I hate that kind of rounding, but it happens. Um, so it was kind of a lot that we did. We started with S of T. We found the displacement on the time interval from zero to five. We did that in like 30 seconds, maybe less, not bad. Um, then we had to deal with distance traveled. So distance traveled, we need to know where does this thing turn around so that we can find the displacement on each leg of the journey. So I found the derivative. Then I solve for the derivative equal to zero. Uh, it wasn't immediately clear to me that all of these or both of these would be in the interval. So I got decimal equivalents to them by hitting control enter. They are both in the interval, which is good. But then I needed to store them and I think that's easier to do on the graph. So I went over here, I graphed the derivative. I had to change the variable to x, graph the derivative. I also graphed zero. I did menu 813 or menu 814 if you have the fancy new calculator. I got these, I stored them, right? And the way you store it is you arrow over it, control menu, and then uh, choose store and type what you wanna call it. Did that for both of them. Went back, I typed these just to make sure I knew which one was which, and then I typed this in and got it, all right? So that's a distance problem, that's a displacement problem, Distance is just more challenging to find. Uh, it's not really a harder concept, it's just more annoying to find. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.